Cancer is one of the most unfair diseases one, one can think of. Cancer is really our own genetics at work against us. Diagnosed with cancer, we try a drug. Doesn't work, we try another drug. And that takes time. If from a patient perspective, I'm sure it feels like every minute is an eternity, right? I mean, if you knew that there was cancer cells in your body, you want to treat it right now. She was the baby, she was the fourth. She was a very, in some ways, self-contained, quiet, thoughtful person, but there was a twinkle in her eye and she could just look at you and just, you know, and, and just was always whimsical. She was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma. It's a, it's a pretty nasty type of bone cancer. And now you're in a, in a world that you can't even imagine for, for the next number of years. We had to go right into extreme chemotherapy. There's a whole lexicon of these different poisons that they're putting in. They're really basically trying to kill any cell that divides. That's why you lose your hair. That's, there's a lot of other side effects. And that's really the, the deal with the devil. At that point, we thought we were in pretty good shape. We're pretty sure she's cancer-free. Then we get word from one of the tests that they think her blood looks a little odd. Because of her treatment and all these different types of chemotherapy agents that she's received, now it caused a secondary disease, a leukemia, to intrude. He's saying, how can this happen again? She got TBI, total body irradiation. They want to kill every leukemic blood cell. But cancer is smart. And years later, somehow, this elusive little Ewing's cell um, evaded everything. And it showed up in her lungs. When it shows up in, in, in the lungs, it's kind of, you know, Game over, it, uh, unfortunately. And they tell, they told Kelsey right there. I guess what it, it shows you is that the, the these treatments are guesswork in a certain way. At the end of the day, whatever we tried didn't work, and we didn't have the time to figure out what would work. If you were unfortunate enough to be diagnosed with cancer today, you would have less than a 35% chance of getting the right chemotherapy the first time. The historical approach to treating cancer is kind of a one-size-fits-all treatment. A treatment approach that's no different from one cancer patient to the next. Now that we're in the genome era, we can begin to think about a different way of treating cancer. So rather than, you know, you have brain cancer or you have lung cancer, you have a cancer that's caused by this mutation. And we have a drug that targets that mutation. A mouse avatar is really a group of mice who represent us. That mouse becomes your surrogate, your avatar in the experimental space. We start with a little piece of tumor from the patient, and we put it into one mouse. And it grows, and we put it into five mice. Then we take the tumors out of those five mice, and we put it into five more mice. It's almost like a photocopy process, right? You, you, you have many mice now all carrying a, a tumor from an individual patient, and you start treating those mice as if they were the patient. So we can try drug A, B, and C. We can try A and B in combination. And you say, aha, treatment A works, treatment B doesn't work, right? And you do that testing in the mice, the tumor-bearing mice, instead of on the patient. Trial and error is exactly what we're doing in the human today. And we do that in sequence. With the mouse, we can do that in parallel. So now we have the ability to actually test new drugs and new ideas in a matter of months, not in a matter of years. 
But the real value in the avatar is the ability to look deeper into that cancer, to figure out something bigger and broader that can be applied to millions of cancer patients. We're gonna take all of the information we get, not just for one patient, but for tens of thousands of patients. And we're gonna put all of that information into a database. And eventually we'll have such a rich knowledge base that we won't have to use those mice anymore. Then it'll be just like Amazon, right? You'll put in the DNA sequence, and the doctor will get back a report that says, ah, patients with this DNA sequence pattern responded best to these treatments. That would be cheap enough and easy enough to apply virtually anywhere, and that's where we need to go to really be able to realize this vision of personalized medicine or precision medicine. Thank you.